Now, we've studied the situation carefully and believe sincerely that our recommendation is in the best interest of the most people. That concludes my presentation, Mayor Spencer, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobson. Well, you've just heard the state's proposal. Is there anyone who... Bob Harris, you look like you have something to say. You bet I have, Mayor. I think Mr. Jacobson is forgetting. Bob, would you identify yourself for the record? Oh, uh, I'm Robert Harris, owner of Harris's Drive-In Restaurant, and I'm speaking as chairman of the Committee on Business Improvement of the Connersville Chamber of Commerce. I think Mr. Jacobson is forgetting there's lots of us in this town who make our living from people driving down Main Street, seeing our signs and stopping. What we need is more people driving down Main Street, not less. If you don't have traffic, you don't have business. Take me, for example. I got four men working for me, and they got families to feed. If I don't get business, those families don't eat. So that's why I say, speaking for the Chamber of Commerce, if there's any highway improvement to be done, let's improve the roads that bring more people into Connersville. Jack, you wish to say something? I'm Jack Connor. I'm a businessman, too, and I'd like to say a few words as an individual backing up what Bob Harris just got through saying. My family's been around Connorsville a long time. My grandfather started this town. The rest of us Connors have helped it grow. I think it's the best little town in the state. This town was made what it is because of the highway running through it. I don't think anybody can deny that. Route 110 brought people into town to shop and to market their farm goods. Of course, none of us ever got rich, but uh, most of us are right comfortable. Now the state comes along and wants to build a bigger and better Route 110. And instead of bringing it through Connersville, where it'll do the most good, they want to go chopping up a lot of farmland outside of the town to fix it so that people won't have to come to Connersville. I say that's wrong. I say the road should come through town the way it's always done. Mr. King. I'm Ralph King. I run the King Dairy Farm out west of town. And I've got plenty to say, too, about this highway. I figure there's something wrong when a man's got to give up his farmland for a road he can't use when the road he does use needs fixing so bad. Now, you're planning to put this big, new superhighway smack dab through my farm so as folks can get from one side of the county to the other ten minutes faster, and you're not planning for me to drive on it from my farm. Now, is that right? Yes, it is, Mr. King. But the traffic load on Route 110 prohibits us from permitting any private entrances. You'll be able to get on the new highway, though, by driving just a short way down Route 134. I suppose I could do that. And that's part of what's griping me. I don't see why I should have to drive two to three miles out of my way down a dusty road full of chuck holes to get onto a new road that runs not more than 200 yards from my house. Well, I don't blame you for complaining about 134. But I can tell you it's on our federal aid secondary road list. And very shortly it'll be improved. Well, that's some good news. But I still say it's wrong to take a man's farmland for a road he can't use. King, the hardest part of being a highway engineer is explaining to people why we have to take their land for a new highway. Believe me, we're the first to admit that we must inconvenience many good people. But it's our job when we plan new highways to try to do the most good for the most people at the least cost and inconvenience. As I said before, the state believes the bypass around Connersville is in the best interest of the most people. Well, it seems to me, Mr. Jacobson, that there's too much thought being given to other people. What about us right here in Connersville? Well, uh, maybe I can help answer that question. My name's Henry Loomis, editor of the Connersville Courier, but I'm speaking as chairman of the Traffic Improvement Council, which Mayor Spencer formed last year. Now, first, I'd like to say that our group agrees with the state's recommendations. Now, the improvements proposed 
for present Route 110 through Connorsville fit in perfectly with the Master Street and Highway plan that we've worked out for Connorsville. And we feel there are some very good reasons why this bypass will be of great interest to all of us. Now, you've already heard some of them from Mr. Jacobson, but there are others. Now, do any of you realize that a controlled access highway through Connorsville would mean a barrier dividing the town in half? The Traffic Improvement Council has studied similar situations in other towns. And we feel that the economic development of Connorsville will be stimulated by this proposed bypass. And the business will actually increase. How's that, Henry? By keeping people away from town? Yes, sir, Jack, exactly. By keeping those out who didn't plan to stop here anyway. Now, what good do through drivers do your business if they don't stop? Plenty of them stop at my place. Well, Bob, I'll admit you may be an exception. But generally speaking, through traffic adds nothing to Connorsville but the bumper-to-bumper -bumper congestion which is already choking us to death. Now, if we can get rid of excess traffic, we'll find that Connorsville can take a deep breath again. And people who want to shop here will. And the lack of congestion will make others want to come. And they'll be the ones who will drive by your sign, Bob. That's all fine and dandy for you people in town, but what about us farmers? Well... I'd say that a new highway could expand your food market potential, both to the north and south. Now, you probably saw the story in route map in last week's paper. You'll be able to drive farther if you want to in a day's time. Now, isn't that so, Mr. Jacobs? Yes, it is. And there's another benefit to you, Mr. King, that nobody else had mentioned today. The economic development that's likely to take place along the new bypass route. Now, other cities have found that industry tends to locate along a good highway outside of town. Land values go up. People move to new suburban homes where they can drive to work in a short time. Mr. Jacobson. Yes, Mayor? Do you have any specific evidence where such development could take place? Well, it's already happened along Route 128, the circumferential highway around Boston, and the New York Thruway, the Gulf Freeway in Houston, and in a number of places in California. Of course, we can't guarantee it'll happen here, but there are plenty of examples to show what could happen. And that would have an effect on the property of everyone along the highway, including yours, Mr. King. That's a long time proposition. Right now, I'm a farmer, and I still want to know why you want my land for your road when you could follow the present right of way on land the state already owns. Well, because we feel we must. Now, all of our studies have shown that your land is the best place for the bypass to go. Then you better figure out a way for me to get my 60 head of cows back from the east pasture to the barn for milking with that road blocking the way. Because if you don't, there's going to be a lot of awful hungry youngsters in Connorsville. <laughs> we'll study the situation, Mr. King. And if necessary, we'll modify our plans to include an underpass so you can move your cows. Bob, did you wish to add something? Uh, Robert Harris again. Uh, Mr. Jacobson, I want to get something clear. Is this bypass plan definite or uh, proposed? Well, it's the state's recommendation, based on a careful study of all the engineering facts and the social and economic data available to us. This meeting is being held to invite any new information and points of view concerning the economic effect of our recommendation. A record is being kept of your comments and will be thoroughly reviewed before we can take any action. Then someone will consider what I say about the bypass. Yes, they will. Then I'm still against it. Yes, Miss Rathbun, did you wish to say something? Yes, Mayor Spencer, I do. I'm Helen Rathburn, the fourth grade teacher at the new elementary school. I, I came here today just to listen. I didn't expect to say anything. Uh, but after hearing some of the arguments against the new highway proposal, I would like to say just one thing. Uh, well, I'm just amazed at the number of people here who seem to be thinking only about themselves. But isn't there a lot more to it than that? Well, I'm a school teacher. I, I work all day with children. And they're your children. So instead of thinking of just what this new road and, and all the thousands of roads just like it are going to mean to you, 
Shouldn't you give some thought as to what they'll mean to your children? Your children will have a better country to live in because of these new roads. Well, they'll be able to drive anywhere safely, even from coast to coast, without fear of in front of them and, and without fear of accidents. Because the people that are planning and building these new roads are, are conforming to standards such as controlled access and, and wider pavements, more lanes and wider shoulders, and, well, all the things that Mr. Jacobson's film talked about. This highway means your children will be able to lead better lives in towns and cities that have had a chance to expand and to grow. From all that some people have said here today, you'd think that Connorsville would just curl up and die if the highway bypasses the town. Well, it seems to me we're just being blind to the facts. Just as we're being blind to our children's future. Can't you see that this highway means a whole new way of life for the children? And a way of life that we have a chance to help plan and, and to build. Well, I think that the least we owe the children is the best and the safest life we can give them. And I think that we owe them the right to live long enough to enjoy that life. Thank you very much, Miss Rathbun. Now, is there anyone else who... Henry? Henry Loomis again. I was about ready to give a detailed report on the Master Street and Highway Plan to convince this group that the state's proposal is going to help us, not hurt us. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, it appears Connersville is joining the long list of cities and towns across the nation already benefiting from the highway program. And so it is with great pleasure that I congratulate you as these ribbon cutting ceremonies today officially opens a new chapter in your long and proud history.